Hello and welcome to Twist List, today we are looking at, 10 Forgotten Kingdoms Lost to History. Although most people know of large kingdoms like the Romans or the Ottomans, many kingdoms in history have disappeared from public knowledge. These kingdoms were important in ancient history but sadly remain forgotten by most modern people. The fifth spot on the list is occupied by, 1162 to 1716. Like the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire split into a variety of successor states when it finally fell. The longest living but forgotten of the new countries was the Empire of Trabzond. During its existence, this empire changed the trade and military environment of the Black Sea, even after the Byzantine Empire reformed. Trebizond remained independent and controlled much of the trade that occurred in the Black Sea. Due to its strategic position, Trebizond mediated trade between the East and Europe, while Trebizond did not control a huge area, it had direct access to the Black Sea. The country formed after the Fourth Crusade. Crusaders formed other states, but Trebizond had the advantage of being ruled by members of the former Byzantine Empire. They had access to much of the trade infrastructure that had existed during the empire, as the Muslim conquests spread throughout the Middle East, Trebizond allied with other Asian governments to attack the Ottoman Empire. The war went terribly, and the Ottomans counter-attacked. Trebizond quickly lost the war and got annexed in 1461. Number 4 on the list is, eventually, the Russians conquered the Khanate and annexed Crimea into their own territory, ending the independent Crimean state. This action continues to influence the world today, as the Russian and Ukrainian governments fight over who owns that part of the world. The Mongolian Golden Horde was one of the biggest empires of all time, but it began to break into smaller kingdoms as its members stopped participating in the constant cycle of conquest and occupation. When members of the Golden Horde stopped their nomadic lifestyle in Crimea, they separated from the Golden Horde and formed their own empire, the Crimean Khanate. For most of their history, the Khanate did battle with the Muscovite Russians, these wars were so successful that the Khanate essentially controlled Muscovy territory and organized a huge slave trade of Russians, especially with the Ottoman Empire. Right after setting up their Mongol kingdom, the rulers of the Khanate realized that they would need to contend with the powerful Ottoman Empire. Within a few years of their independence, the Khanate went to war with the Ottomans, who defeated the Khanate. However, the Ottomans allowed the Khanate to stay semi-independent as a vassal power. Unfortunately for the Khanate, the Muscovite Russians declared independence from the Tartars and increased their power over the centuries, eventually posing a direct challenge to the Crimean territory, Kola dynasty. At the third place we have, but their power did not last. Like the rest of India, the Mughal Empire dealt with the British East India Company. By the 1700s, the Mughal Empire declined in power due to financial troubles and religious fanaticism in their leadership. In the 16th century, the Turkic Prince Babur lost control of his Asian kingdom. Unwilling to accept a life without power, Babur turned to India to satisfy his thirst for power. Gathering forces in Kabul, Babur launched a successful invasion in northern India, eventually taking over the northern part of the subcontinent. When Babur led the empire, he retained its power and increased its notoriety among its neighbors. Then he died, before he could, he died by tripping down stone stairs, and control of the empire went to his 13-year-old son Akbar. Although inaugurated under inauspicious circumstances, Akbar led his people to reclaim their territory and re-establish their mighty empire. The British East India Company took over most of the empire. When the British crown assumed direct control of India, the Mughal Empire was gone. Babur's son Humayun took over the empire but lost it to Muslim attackers from Afghanistan. For 15 years, the territory of the Mughal Empire fell under the rule of the Afghans. But India remained destabilized and exploded into civil war, 
giving Humayun the opportunity to reclaim his territory. For centuries, the Mughal Empire was the most powerful government on the Indian subcontinent, leading in both military power and trade. They also established the high point of Indo-Persian culture, with many buildings such as the Taj Mahal being built in their style. 5. At the second spot is, Clothar II as son Dagobert I used the Merovingian army against the Slavic pagans to the east and to make inroads into Spain. During Dagobert's rule, the empire achieved its largest expanse. The Merovingian dynasty was composed of a series of kings in France who occupied large portions of Europe during their reign. They are generally considered the first kings of France, although the idea of multiple kingdoms seemed like a good idea, it led to constant civil war between the different parts of the Merovingian dynasty. The battles happened so often that it became an accepted part of life with the rulers establishing various regulations of warfare, but after his rule, the outlying territories started to fall. With royal power gone, the decisions of the empire were left to the mayors of the palace. This weakened power in the empire, with the lineage eventually ending with Pepin the Middle taking the throne. When the family line ended, the Merovingian dynasty was over, under the leadership of Merovec. The Frankish tribes defeated various Germanic tribes in Western Europe, incorporating all of their territory into the new Frankish kingdom. Eventually, the dynasty transformed into a kingdom and finally, of kingdoms. At number one, each kingdom during was ruled time, by its own Colin king, made a deal but they to were all answerable with Lithuania, to the head of the dynasty independence in 613. The While this king worked Clothar for a short time, Poland united the parts of the empire and set about to establishing a Merovingian dynasty as an to exist as an independent power. state. Constant Yet the weakened royal power was one of the greatest the powers in dynasty during the medieval period. When most people hear of the country Lithuania, they do not think of a major world power. But for a large chunk of European history, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania was one of the most powerful forces on the continent. At first, they were a set of unaligned tribes. But under King Mindaugas, the various Lithuanian tribes united as a single nation. Lithuania also made a powerful alliance with Poland but only under the condition that the Grand Duke of Lithuania convert to Catholicism. When the Grand Duke acquiesced, the two countries united under a single ruler. With that rule coming from Lithuania, the Grand Duchy increased its influence, the Lithuanians spread their influence across Eastern Europe, conquering territories all the way from the Baltics to the Black Sea, including large chunks of modern-day Ukraine and Russia. However, a series of weak rulers allowed the power of the country to shift to Polish kings. Eventually, the two countries split allowing the Lithuanians to continue wars with the Muscovites four on the in the east, east and the Tartars in the disaster. south. These Alexander wars Fleming spread the Lithuanians thin, and they gradually lost territory. Crimean the world's Conate. first antibiotic substance, in 1928. However, the world-changing discovery was made by chance, and it is most likely one of the best mistakes in history. Fleming left his lab for a month to go on vacation with his family. Upon his return, the Scottish doctor realized that one of his petri dishes of Staphylococci had a fungus growing in it, which destroyed the surrounding bacteria. Surprised by his finding, he grew the mold in a pure culture and ultimately discovered that it could annihilate bacteria. 7. He coined the antibiotic substance the fungus produced as mold juice. While it took a few years for penicillin to reach the public, it was eventually used to treat allied wounds and saved countless lives during World War II. At the third place we have, Alexander Fleming's Dirty Lab. At 7.48 am local time on December 7, 1941, Japan launched a surprise aerial attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, located on Oahu Island, Hawaii. Hundreds of Japanese fighter planes damaged or destroyed 19 American naval vessels as well as over 300 airplanes. Around 2,400 Americans also lost their lives, and over 1,000 more were injured.
leading the United States to declare war on Japan the next day. The big mistake Japan made was concentrating its attack on U.S. battleships, as it would have been more beneficial to target Pearl Harbor's fuel reserves and repair yards. Japan also chose the wrong day to attack, as the Pacific Fleet's aircraft carriers and their personnel were away from the naval base. The U.S. Navy could therefore quickly recover from the surprise attack. 8. At the second spot is, Japan picking the wrong Pearl Harbor target. Nazi Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union was undoubtedly a big turning point in World War II. 9. Despite making a non-aggression pact with Russia in 1939, Hitler stated in Mein Kampf that the Soviet Union was always an enemy of Nazi Germany. The pact was, however, an effective way for both nations to buy time and potentially prevent a two-front war. Many believe attacking the Soviet Union was Hitler's biggest mistake. If Germany had never invaded Russia, Stalin may never had entered World War II and may have continued to supply Germany with materials for war. Hitler had already decided to invade Russia once he controlled Europe. The invasion of the Soviet Union started on Sunday, June 22, 1941, and the attack, known as Operation Barbarossa, ultimately led to what the Russians called the Great Patriotic War. In a bid to defend both its people and borders, the Soviet Union joined the Allies. On top of that, Hitler's army was not prepared for an arduous Russian winter. Germany lost 750,000 troops before November. And finally, at number one, Hitler invading Russia. Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife, Sophie, were visiting Sarajevo and had ignored warnings of terrorist activity by the nationalist group The Black Hand. At 10.10 10 a.m. on June 28, 1914, Nijelko Kabranovic, a member of the organization, threw a bomb at the Archduke's car. However, the assassination attempt was thwarted when a driver spotted the object and accelerated the automobile which landed under a vehicle behind the royal couple's open-air car, injuring both the passengers and spectators. Following a short rest, the Archduke and his wife were adamant about visiting the people who had been injured by the bomb at the hospital. However, the driver was not notified that the royal couple's itinerary had changed. Once he was informed, he had to turn the car around onto a side street. At the same time, Gavrilo Princip, a Black Hand member, was standing across that street after the assassination attempt had failed. Seizing the opportunity, Princip quickly walked across the street and shot Sophie and the Archduke. 10. Tragically, this one mistake not only led to the murder of the royal couple, but it triggered World War I, which claimed the lives of 18 million people. And finally, at number one, marriage was more of a business trial. Men married at a reasonable age, around 20 to 25 or in their late teens, but women were often married before ages 14 to 15. 
The marriage ceremony was more of a business agreement between the two families. There was a feast, though, and a bit of a celebration. It's believed that this ceremony was fast and not necessarily happy, men of a lower status could only marry one woman. Luckily, the spouses were given a trial period of a few years. If the girl was not happy, she could return home. If the husband wasn't happy with his wife, he could send her back to her home. It was the custom for the girls to move in with a husband after the husband's family built them a home. Every year, the leader of each village in the empire would line up all the available boys and girls and pair them off in arranged marriages. If two men wanted to marry the same woman, the parents would have to present reasons to the leader why their son should win her hand. The leader made the final decision, though. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more then please hit the subscribe button.